While some people were speaking about how the temple was adorned with costly stones and votive offerings, Jesus said, All that you see here, the days will come when there will not be left a stone upon another stone that will not be thrown down. Our gospel reading for today comes from the 21st chapter of Luke's gospel. We've been listening to excerpts of this chapter over the past few weeks, the final weeks of the church year. The 21st chapter of Luke opens with the story of the widow's contribution to the temple treasury and concludes noting that Jesus spent his nights at the Mount of Olives and his days preaching in the temple in Jerusalem. In between, we find various apocalyptic sayings and parables from this preaching in the temple. Let me encourage you to reread all of chapter 21 of Luke one more time before the end of this week and the beginning of Advent. Reflecting on this reading from its historical context, it's likely that the prophecy of there will not be left a stone upon another stone references a traumatic event in the life of believers in first century Palestine, the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem by the Romans in the year 70 CE. This detail helps us understand how the text might have been heard and received by Luke's audience in the late first century. Jesus is presented speaking confidently about terrible future events and reassuring his listeners that such things must happen first. Nonetheless, we are left to interpret this text thousands of years later, long after the destruction of a temple with which we have less personal or spiritual investment, and we find ourselves today in a world still turbulent with crisis. These readings come both at the end of the liturgical year and in two days here in the United States, we will celebrate the Thanksgiving holiday. In his spiritual practice, The Examine, St. Ignatius instructs us first to meditate on gratitude. Those of us practicing Ignatian spirituality then are offering a small thanksgiving every day, every time we enter into this meditative prayer. Our psalm response today from Daniel is also a song of thanksgiving. Give glory and eternal praise to him. Bless the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. This gospel and the psalm sit in tension today between a prophecy of global destruction and a canticle of gratitude praising the works of the Lord. This particular good news of Jesus may not put us in the holiday spirit of celebration. However, isn't this how many of us are feeling? We are entering into the Thanksgiving holiday, entering into a collective national meditation on gratitude while we observe many of the events Jesus is describing in this prophecy. Jesus says, see that you not be deceived, for many will come in my name, do not follow them. We have observed some of our family and friends taken in by the spell of false prophets. And I mean specifically, blindly following political figures and mesmerized by social media engineered to stoke tribalism. We have heard of wars and insurrections, the turbulent end of military commitment in Afghanistan, and the ongoing political aftermath of the January 6th insurrection at our capital. We have experienced famines and plagues and mighty signs coming from the sky, social instability, pandemics, economic instability. Many of these events we now know are linked to our changing climate and transforming ecosystems. Apart from ruining the holiday mood, the gospel reading today parallels some headlines on the nightly news. Nonetheless, Jesus cautions, when you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for such things must happen first. Events like these are difficult in our times, but they are not unique to our times. Even under the persecution of the Babylonians or the Roman Empire, the psalmists over the centuries have declared, you heavens, bless the Lord. All you waters above the heavens, bless the Lord. Our ecosystem, the source and cause of our current global anxiety, 
is also a manifestation of the magnificent works of God. As I reflect on Luke chapter 21, in light of current events and our upcoming celebration of Thanksgiving in two days, I think it gives us an opportunity to reflect on what gratitude really is and what it means to be grateful. For me, it doesn't mean that everything is perfect or even getting better. In fact, the situation of life for many of us today could be growing quite worse. Our wars and insurrections may be among our family, work colleagues, or friends, and some will fear what conflict may arise at the Thanksgiving table. We could be experiencing famine and plague in our spiritual lives manifested in loneliness, depression, despair, and desolation. Our famines and plagues may also be literal hunger and sickness or the death of a loved one, especially close to the holiday season. Nonetheless, Jesus reminds us at these moments, do not be terrified. Like the psalmists, we can face these trials and still give glory and eternal praise. The Nobel Peace Prize winner, author, and Holocaust survivor, Elie Wiesel, famously said that he believed in God in spite of God, in spite of the suffering he witnessed and endured. He said that while he was angry with God, he would not stop praying to him. When we meditate on gratitude, even in the midst of suffering, we come to recognize all the gifts that we have been given, and we are no longer consumed by our suffering or desolation. We can live with sadness, but not allow ourselves to be defined by it. Let me leave you today with this quote by Elie Wiesel. If the only prayer you say throughout your life is thank you, then that will be enough. Happy Thanksgiving.